Much love and respect to everybody that's tuned in. Thanks for uh, taking the time to watch the video. Really appreciate all the support. Much love to my Patreons. Thanks for keeping me uh, afloat. We're going to be talking about Early Man in America again today. Another archaeological site that we know very little about. A very important and controversial site in Mexico. This site has literally been buried by mainstream education. What they found in this site goes against everything they literally teach. So, of course, they buried this. Even though they sent their own people to do the field work and the test to date these artifacts and bones and all that that was over there, they still tried to deny it and discredit the people who did. People with a lot of credentials we're going to read. And to this day, to the geologists, it's no doubt what they're finding based on their scientific analysis and test. And it's an ongoing battle with the so-called archaeologists. Before I begin today's video, I wanted to go over my video library pertaining to early man in America. This video right here is the Guadalupe woman. Very controversial, very significant find in the Caribbean, in Guadalupe. Possibly the oldest modern human remains on Earth in America. Yeah, we're not talking about monkey bones or ape man or ancestors of man like you know they look like monkeys or anything like that these are modern type human bones this is the video right here part 14 untold ancient american truth series i have make sure you guys check out that series if you haven't this is the guadalupe woman again oldest modern human we might be talking about the case of a miocene man we're talking about 25 million years ago miocene man huh could it be that old this human skeleton was actually housed at the British Museum for many, many years. They actually had it on display for many years, a long time ago. And, the, and then they put it in their basement to hide it. At the west end of the room is a fossil human skeleton embedded in limestone brought from Guadalupe. Historic records when this was found and brought to the British Museum. The British Museum actually had it displayed as an antediluvian or pre-flood person. The history of the collections contained in the natural history departments of the British Museum. Okay, this is from volume one, I guess, 1904. This is what I'm showing in this video. This here is the Department of Geology. But right here, as you guys can see, Charles Koenig. So Charles Koenig was taking care of it in the museum. He had already displayed a predilection for organic remains, having published an account of the fossil human skeleton from Guadalupe in the Philosophical Transactions for 1814. An illustrated work on some of the fossils in the British Museum on the title Econius Fossilium, all right? This was there. It says here, 1813, a human skeleton in coral limestone from Guadeloupe, West Indies, captured on the taking of the island from the French by Sir Alexander Cochrane, RN, was presented by the Lords of the Almerty. The specimen was described by Mr. C. Koenig in Philosophical Transactions, all right, in 1814. This is the book right here, Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society of London. Page 107, it says here on a fossil human skeleton from Guadalupe by Charles Koenig. Okay. The human skeleton embedded in limestone lately brought from Guadalupe by Honorable Sir Alexander Cochrane. Right. So this was a big find, a huge thing. Make sure you guys check out the whole video. I got a lot of sources, 
lot of good information. You guys can see the British Museum deliberately put it in their basement after uh, displaying it for many years as a pre-flood person. Another video, make sure you check out, is this one, Untold Ancient American Truth, Pleocene Man in America, the Calavera Skull. We did a good video on the Calavera Skull from California. In this video, we go over some previous information, some sites that predate accepted, you know, historical dates for people in America. Uh, for example, that found humans lived in North America 130,000 years ago. Study claims in California because they're finding uh, mastodon bones with marks and stuff showing human presence. Many finds pushing back their Clovis dates. All right, guys are going to learn about Clovis. Clovis was a hijack. They try to say it was only, you know, 12,000 years ago, the oldest and this first uh, Clovis culture. And that was, you know, debunked. It has been debunked ever since. We're talking about, you know, very old uh, sites all over the Americas. We're talking about the case for the Calavera skull. This is uh, no exception. Found in deposits that are very, very old. We're talking about Pleocene. On the Pleocene time, Pleocene man in America. That is a picture of it in black and white. I actually found, you know, the real picture and I colorized it. That's what it looked. You know, people who actually saw it and knows about these things, they say, yeah, look, it's just like the uh, surrounding material. It's so old. You know, it's fossilized, literally fossilized, and it's a human skull. We're not talking about monkeys. We're not talking about apes. Now, whether these things are that old, that's a whole different thing. I'm just saying that if they're techniques if their science is telling you if they're finding it in these weird places that it should be millions of years old then maybe the way they date things is wrong and how they view the past what if this is part of a cataclysm right and they got stuck under there that's a whole different story but what i'm trying to tell you is that they're finding things and we're talking about modern humans here in america older than the monkeys they're finding in africa and this is stuff that's was hidden this is official uh finds we're talking about that Geological Survey of California. Mr. J.D. Whitney, state geologist, went over there. We're talking about paleontology, volume two. And we're talking about that they found in the Pleocene uh, bed with human skull near Angels Camp, Calaveras County. They found what? A human skull in the Pliocene strata. This is from the American Naturalist, volume 16 from 1882. We're just talking about the ancient man of Calaveras. All right. So again, make sure to catch the whole video. Guys, this is almost a four-hour video. Okay. A lot of good information. A lot of research. People uh, making it official. They cannot deny this stuff. They just try to hide it. Again, this is part 16, Untold Ancient American Truth. Clearly seen men in America. But don't worry. I have the playlist uh, I created. It's called Forbidden Archaeology, which contains all these videos of early men in America. Next video I want you guys to check out, if you can, is this one, Lemuria in Mexico, William Nemo's Lost Discovery. We're talking about, they found things 50,000 years old civilization. I'm on Nagas, Nakal. Yeah. William Nemo, he knew James Churchward. He's the guy who created the story of Lemuria. He actually stole all his finds, uh, William Nevin's finds here in Mexico. They found this deep down in the ground, very very deep where they found this stuff it's supposed to be at least fifty thousand years old but this is what we're telling you things don't add up things don't make sense and if things don't make sense then their whole stories are all false the ones they tell us about all the other stuff they're finding in other parts of the world so who's to say we're not old again make sure to check that out we go into part 17 untold ancient american truth this is calico early man all right Humans in America 200,000 years ago. You guys got to see the research behind all of this stuff. All right. We're reading. A, this is part of a book we're reading here. It says estimated ages range from 20,000 years for the surface artifacts to 50,000 for the buried relics. But as two master pits attained depths of well over 30 feet in artifacts continued to be found, surprise was succeeded by bewilderment. Dr. Thomas Clemens, retired chairman of the geology department of the University of Southern California, and project geologist believes 100,000 years is the maximum age of the site. More than 100 scientists from all parts of the world attended the Calico International Conference at the San Bernardino County Museum in 
Bloomington, California in October of 1970, where they listened to lectures and examined the evidence. The astonishing depth at which artifacts have been found, plus nature of the soil, has led some geologists to believe that 200,000 to 500,000 years is a more probable estimate. All right? So it's not making sense. The geologists, based on their science, are getting different dates than the archaeologists that want to accept. And so it's an ongoing debate, but many, many scientists, this is stuff that you never was told. And of course, I'm going to show you guys what happens. A lot of the times when they're finding these things, they're also finding monkey bones in Africa and drawing your attention. Another video I want you guys to check out, early men in America, out of place bones, geological and archaeological evidence, forbidden history. Another video that touches on early men in America, many, many references we go over. The bones of forgotten men, as you see here. So, yeah, we go over a lot of information on this. Uh, only 38 minutes. Make sure to check this out again to correlate with what we're going to be learning uh, today about this site in Mexico. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, guys. So we're going to be talking today about the Huellatlaco archaeological site in Mexico. And as it says here, uncovers 250,000 year old settlement. Now, I'm just showing this blog real quick because it has some pretty cool pictures. But we're going to go through a lot of material. So make sure to watch the whole video completely. Because here, humans were hunting mastodons in Mexico 250,000 years ago. That sounds just like what they found in California, talking about 130,000 years ago. This archaeological heresy is supported by finding at Huejetlaco. Huejetlaco is an archaeological site in Valsequillo, Mexico. Several potential pre Clovis localities were found in the 1960s around the edge of the Valsequino Reservoir in Mexico. One of these localities is the site of Huejatlaco. This site was excavated by Cynthia Urban Williams, all right, and she has a lot of credentials sent over there. And this was Virginia C. McIntyre. She writes, Huejatlaco is a dangerous site. To even publicly mention the geological evidence for its great age is to jeopardize one's professional career. Three of us geologists can testify to that. Its very existence is blasphemous because it questions a basic dogma of Darwinism, the ruling philosophy or religion, if you will, of the Western scientific world for the past 150 years. That dogma states that over a long period of time, members of the human family have generally become more and more intelligent. The Huejatlaco site is thus impossible because mid-Pleistocene humans weren't smart enough to do all that the evidence implies. All right, you see what they're saying? Oh no, they couldn't have, humans couldn't have done that in America. No, no. Besides, there is no new world anthropoid stock from which they could have evolved, right? They're like, plus there wasn't people there, right? They're trying to say there was no people here. It says beds containing human artifacts at Valsequillo, Mexico have been dated at approximately 250,000 years before the present by fission track dating of volcanic material and uranium dating of camel pelvis. You think this is just a website, right guys? I know we're just in the beginning. But uh, as you guys can see, look at this column that's right here. Again, you can't even see this site right now because it's buried still. It's buried. It's it's not even above ground. It's it's old. Now there's a great article in the Quaternary Research from 1981, volume 16, and it's this one right here, as you guys can see from Cambridge University Press. I wasn't able to get access to this, but I want to show you guys that. You know, like I says here, this is from the USGS.gov, the US Geological Society, right? Or survey. Geologic evidence for age of deposits at Huejatlaco Archaeological Site, Valsequillo, Mexico, January 1, 1981. Direct tracing of beds during excavation in May 1973 confirmed that the artifact bearing layers of Huejatlaco underlie 10 meters of fine grained water lake deposits that constitute part of the widespread Valsequillo gravels. A section of these deposits by the adjacent reef or Toyak has reached a depth of 50 meters. The stratigraphic section at Ajitlaco includes four distinctive tephra units. The oldest one occupies a small channel and series of cut and filled streams deposits that have yielded bifacial tools. It lies more than a meter above flat line fine grained beds from which edge recharge tools have been recovered. The three other tephra units occur higher in the section. Fission tracks ages of Circon Fenocris from two of the younger Tephra layers, 370,000. Uh huh. They're like, what? 
200,000 and 600,000. What? 340,000 years. What? Agree with concordant uranium series dates for a camel pelvis that was found associated with bifacial tools at Huerta Taco. 245,000, huh? They're like, what? 40,000 years by 230, 180,000 years by 231 PA. These dates are compatible with the death of burial and subsequent dissection of the Huella Talco deposits, as well as with the degree of hydration of volcanic glass, shards, and with the extent of etching of heavy mineral phrenocris from within the tephra layers. These findings suggest to us that further search for archaeological remains in deposits as old as those of Huella Talco would be warranted. All right. I'm trying to tell you guys, I'm trying to show you guys here. This is official. The geologists are telling you, yo, this is what our tests are saying. This is what we're finding. And this is still buried today, guys. They don't want to accept this. It seems that the archaeologists carry more weight. And it seems monkey bones carry more weight. I'm in Graham Hancock's website. Graham Hancock, great author, right? I read a lot of his books before, you know, the internet even came around. Yeah, I was, I was following Graham Hancock for a while. I was reading a lot of his uh, books back then um he's actually talking about this in his website here he has a blog here it says the first american again the first american we're talking about two hundred thousand years ago it says the suppressed story of the people who discovered the new world all right and again they're always trying to add, say that people came here that they weren't here right but again dr hijack america is the true old world it says here the first american by christopher hardica we're going to read a little bit about this book all right we don't have full access i have it right here I uh, just want to read a little bit what Graham Hancock has to say. It says here, the discoveries. This is the story of a remarkable art piece discovered in 1959 by an equally remarkable man at the Valsequillo Reservoir outside the city of Puebla, about 75 miles south of Mexico City. Juan Armenta Camacho stunned the world with his discovery of a mineralized elephant pelvis with engravings of elephants, big cats, and other extinct animals all right guys so not only are they just finding artifacts here and evidence of man living here and these deposits that are supposed to be that old right they also found a pelvis right with drawings a pelvis of one of those large elephants a bone yeah they drew on the bone they put engravings of what elephants so somebody a person was at drawing elephants big cats we're talking about the lions the jaguars we already know all these things originated here in America. Check out my ancient animals of America video. We've proven this and other extinct animals. Now, what is significant about this, right? We're talking about art, right, guys? We're talking about people creating art, drawing. This is old. This would be the oldest art a human has done that has been found. The engravings had been made when the bone was still fresh, still green. Whoever made these engravings actually saw those animals and probably even ate and prayed to them. The most amazing creator of them all was smack dab in the middle of the thing. A fourth tusk gonfotir. What is that? You guys are going to see. An ancestor of the mastodon. So this is from our elephants in America video. This is one of their ancestors. I told you that the ancestors of the elephants were found throughout America. We're talking about elephants originating here too in America. And they found a drawing of a gun foot here in this Mastodon bone. So meaning the person saw that this animal, as it says here, an extinct in US for over a million years. It's supposed to have been extinct for over a million years, yet a human drew it, a human who made an engraving on a Mastodon pelvis that was found in deposits that are supposed to be over 200,000 years old based on the test done by the U.S. Geological Survey. This is what I'm trying to explain to you guys. I hope you guys are following so far. We're talking about drawings here. Look at this, guys. The oldest. This would be the oldest. But in central Mexico, these mythical beasts lived among mammoths and mastodons and humans. This was absolutely amazing. Other engraved pieces were also found. Nobody in the Americas had ever seen anything like this before. They were all mineralized. It was totally new in every meaning of the word, except for their age, which could be very old. Harvard archaeologists 
Cynthia Irvin Williams, all right? We're talking about a Harvard archaeologist. Even Cynthia, even though she don't agree with the other lady from the, because this is an archaeologist, right? She dated it to about 30,000 years, which predated all the Clovis uh, theories, right? Clovis first, talking about 12,000 years ago, Bering Strait. So even she agrees that it's much older than that. So that whole Bering Strait theory is debunked by Cynthia, Harvard archaeologist, and Juan Armenta Camacho, with direct support from Harvard and the Smithsonian, found another 80 to 90 mammoth and mastodon bone sites around the perimeter of the reservoir in 1962. Then they excavated three sites on the Tetela Peninsula. All had artifacts next to mineralized bones that were left behind after butchering. The sites themselves were laid out pretty much how the hunters left them. The features were covered by successive layers of sands and silts deposited by a very slow creek and were laid out in the same positions as they were originally buried. In the business of paleoarchaeology, it is called primary deposition. And in this respect, Valsequillo was pure gold. For example, Irvin Williams found a horse jaw. Remember that horses originated in America. Yes, all that originated here, not over there in Asia or Africa. And a tooth from it was an inch away from the jaw. This meant virtually no bone movement when they were buried. About half inch away was a stone knife. You guys hear that? There was a knife next to this. It was immaculate feature, so good that they sought it out in a square block. A portable feature destined for the National Museum. It was just priceless. For the people of Mexico, it meant national pride. The city of Puebla began celebrating as the Eden of the Americas. It was all there in that feature block. This feature block was later vandalized and destroyed by the Mexican archaeologists who signed the official dig permits. This was the same official who would later falsely testify that the artifacts were planted. This charge was laughably dispatched by Irvin Williams' 3,000 photographs detailing the excavation and extraction of each piece, also currently missing. You guys hear that? The lady from Harvard said no. So they were trying to debunk the lady from Harvard. And she had how many photographs? Look at that. 3,000 proven the excavation, which also all this stuff has disappeared, right, guys? Smithsonian, she worked for the Smithsonian. What she thought was going to happen? Welcome to a Dubai West. So this is a uh, picture of the area. Puebla Tlalco right here, El Orno. These are different sites. The real problem was that the bones were mineralized. Carbon-14 dating was useless. For six years, nobody knew how old these sites were. It was absolute frustrating. Here you are with a trio of neighboring sites that were very probably the earliest ever uncovered in the new world. Everything was perfect, except you could not date the sites. At the time of 1968, the oldest site in the Americas clocked in at 12,000 years, aka 10,000 BC. Yeah, right. What you think? This is Turkey? No, we go older than that. Again, that was the bunk. Crossing the Siberian land bridge to Alaska, the Clovis mammoth killers arrived with their ultra sleek spearhead, maybe the best on the planet at the time. What was not considered a bit strange, however, was that no 12,000-year-old Clovis points had ever been found in Canada, Alaska, or Siberia. So there's no trace of their migration, so that was all made up. After decades of looking, there was still no trace of the Clovis trail. Oh well, details. It was Clovis or bust, and its defenders demanded archaeological perfection for any site that dared challenge their cherished, though untested theory. Again, theory, nicknamed Clovis first. That was all theories, just like the out of Africa theory. Just by looking at the hardened sentiments, almost sandstone, Irvin Williams and Mary Warmington knew right off that they were probably older. But how much older? 8,000 years older, like like 13,000 years ago, or maybe even 15,000 years ago? This was an extremely tender issue among the Orthodox. Many had challenged the pre-Clovis crown, and all were tossed down the academic toilet. Now it was Falsiquillo's turn, and it was armed for bear. Falsiquillo had art, and it had unmistakable spearheads. Falsiquillo's artifacts types were definitely those of modern man. Again, modern man, not monkeys. Simple retouched points made out of shirt flakes were found in the older artifact beds. While higher up in the younger, more recent beds, they found full-fledged spearheads and knives, bifacially flaked. 
they were modern, all right, but they were also much more primitive than the immaculate Clovis points. All right, it's much older than all that Clovis stuff that has been debunked. Could it be that the Balsakillo hunters were the ancestors of the Clovis mammoth hunters? The modern period starts with the Old World Upper Paleolithic period around 30, 40,000 years ago. This was the beginning of modern man, Homo sapiens sapiens. All right, you guys understand what they're telling you? Because this lady from Harvard dated these artifacts from modern humans at the same time when modern humans are supposed to be coming out and out of the parts of the world. Man who thinks he thinks. <laughs> the blade to biface revolution happens over there also. And now for the first time in the new world, this critical phase of technological evolution turns up in the new world in central Mexico. This was huge in itself. The theoretical potential of such discoveries would be shattering. The artifacts, the art, and the sandy silk matrix immediately challenged the Clovis firsters. Dr. Warmington even conceded that Balsaquillo could be 40,000 years. Everyone agreed, however, that it could not be earlier than 40,000 years because only modern man was intelligent enough to manage the trip from Siberia to the New World. It was common knowledge. All right, so they're like, yeah, but it can't be older than that because, you know, uh, before that is it's the monkeys. Uh-oh. Without clear dates for the artifacts, talk was cheap and frustrations grew. Then, geological science entered the fray. In 1968, a USGS geologist suggested using his new uranium series technique to date the bone, and that's when everything fell apart. The bone dates from the Tetela sites were 250,000 years old and so opened up one of the craziest archaeological wormholes in history. That's a quarter million years old. Modern man didn't live back then, and all the artifacts from Balsaquillo were fancy spearheads and blades, things we mods didn't know how to make until 30, 40,000 years ago. And there was art. And Balsaquillo was 250,000 years old. That's Homo erectus time. And there's art. It not only threatened to trash the American paradigm of prehistory, it would also trash the old world paradigm for the last phases of human evolution. All right, debunking evolution. This was serious. There were modern stone tools in Mexico that were 200,000 years older than the earliest modern tools in Europe and Asia and Africa. It was nuts. It was impossible anyway. You looked at it. Geologists kept coming up with similar ages for the site, no matter what they threw at it. And no matter what the geological sciences turned up, no matter all their tests that they were saying no, we did numerous tests. The archaeological community fought back with stifling wall of absolute silence and non-comment. They would have none of it, period. The wormhole became an academic black hole. The region became a forbidden zone. And Balsaquillo dropped from the lips of credibility. You guys hear what happened? In the end, the archaeologists won through silence. Irvin Williams never published an official volume, not even site reports. Why did she go there then? She was sent by Harvard. Listen to what happened. What happened to all her work there? And the curiosity that raged through the professional community was calmly checked at the door of credibility. So anybody that spoke up lost their credentials. So everybody just got silent. What happened to the artifacts, the art? Gone lost missing destroyed there was lots of stuff priceless stuff now it is forgotten stuff largely a non-subject on both sides of the border with professionals from mexico and the u.s sharing a common disinterest this was america's first art first periods first kill sites and a lot of other firsts as well it satisfied all the required perfections demanded by the clovis first crowd and it was still flushed down the academic toilet the archaeologists would not work with the geologists unless they recanted their ridiculous dates. The geologists could not do this. Every time they dated the site with different dating techniques, the site came out as old or older than 200,000 years. I told you guys, the geologists are going with their results. And it would take a lot more than catcalls by angry archaeologists to make the geologists betray the scientific laws governing their evidence. Science is not opinion, but that was all the archaeologists could muster. Opinions. And in the end, the archaeologists won by default, by absolute non-comment, not even a whisper. And that was pretty much that. 
had it not been for a long holdout geologist from the original project, one of America's greatest archaeology stories would have been lost to the fog of professional amnesia. She was able to recover the archives of Erwin Williams, who had passed away several years earlier. Letters, notes, some photos, and other materials would show that Balsiquillo was pure archaeological gold. It may not have been the earliest contender for the pre-Clovis throne, but it was simply the best. And my archaeological elders didn't tell us about it, or they felt compelled to forget about it. Only deep therapy will tell. One thing is certain. From that point on, for the next 30 years, first American studies were held hostage by the myth of Adam and Eve, Clovis. Today, Balsiquillo still remains unresolved. The good news is that pros are back doing work at one of the sites. A couple of years ago, another investigator reported finding human footprints in lava a few miles away. It is an ongoing drama, and this is the prequel. Now, I want to show you guys here as they show you the who was involved, some of the people. It says here the players. The list below is from the 1967 NSF grant proposal by Erwin Williams and the project geologist Paul Maldi on loan by USGS. Most of these people were primetime players during the 1960s and included at least two notable Clovis Firsters. It was an early instance of integrated and multidisciplined approach to archaeology. The potential worldwide implications for the Valsequillo discoveries could be monumental, and the world was watching. The official model for the rights of modern humans was facing its greatest challenge. Says here, Principal Investigator J. O. Brew from the Peabody Museum in Harvard. Circum Fish and Track Dating, Charles Nazer, USGS branch of isotope geology. These are the people that are telling you it's 200,000 years old. Volcanic ash chronology, Virginia Steen McIntyre. She was one of the main ones right here. She's from the USGS field geochemistry and petrology. In archaeology, we have Cynthia Irvin Williams from the Peabody Museum in Harvard. H. Marie Warmington, Denver Museum of Natural History. Geology, Harold E. Maldi, U.S. Geological Survey. Vertebrate Paleontology, Clay and E. Ray from Smithsonian Institute. Now you know why it's been hidden. Soil Stratigraphy, Roald Frixel, Washington State University. U-Series Dating, Barney Sabo, USGS Branch of Isotopic Geology. Palynology, Poland. Paul S. Martin, University of Arizona, Geochrome Lab. Says here, 14C Dating, Mayor Rubin, USGS. C. Vance Haynes, University of Arizona. Neutron Activation Analysis, Gordon Golds, University of Oregon. Paleomagnetic Dating, Joseph C. Lidico, USGS. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys that. This is not just anybody creating a blog on the internet, Wikipedia and all that, right? We're talking about real scientists who confirmed this, and this was flushed down the toilet. I'm going to read from this book real quick. It says here, The First American, The Suppressed Story of the People Who Discovered the New World by Christopher Hardiker. Because this book is about our knowledge of early man. There are two subplots, early man in the old world and early man in the new world. So-called new world, right? Much is known about early man in the old world, where new discoveries continue to expand our knowledge base. Unfortunately, in the new world right here in the Americas, our knowledge is largely limited to Clovis and younger cultures. All right, Clovis has been debunked. The study of potential pre-Clovis sites is not encouraged, and those who report a possible pre-Clovis site do so at significant risk to their career. So you guys hear what happens? An important part of this book reviews what is known about early man site along the shores of Valsequillo Reservoir, south of Puebla in central Mexico. It is a fascinating tale with a lot of data which are accepted by most geologists and not accepted by most archaeologists. As a scientist, I am embarrassed that it has taken more than 30 years for archaeologists and geologists to revisit the bone and artifact deposits at Valsequillo Reservoir. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, data were presented that suggested early man had been in the new world much earlier than anyone had previously thought. Rather than further investigate the discoveries, which is what should have been done, they were buried under the sands of time. All right, you guys hear? This is not a conspiracy. They literally did this in the hope that they would be forgotten. My idea of science is to investigate anomalous data and hopefully learn something new. Unfortunate, the Clovis first mentality was so ingrained in North American archaeology that no further work was undertaken. My first contact with the bone and artifact deposits of the Valsequillo Reservoir came in the early 1970s, 
when I was asked if I would date zircons from some tephra unit layers of volcanic rumus ash. All right, so you hear he's a geologist. They asked him to go do the dating that overlay the artifact bearing beds. I agreed to take on the study as I was aware of the controversy regarding the age of the site. At the time, I was sharing an office with Barney Sabo, the geochemist who had provided the uranium series dates that started the controversy. His ages suggested that the artifact beds were in excess of 200,000 years old. This did not sit well with the archaeologists in charge of the project. The original paper by Sabo, Maldi, and Urban Williams, Earth and Planetary Science Letters from 1969, you guys can look for it, sets the stage for the controversy. Geochronology versus Archaeology. This is the only paper of which I am aware where one co-author submits a rebuttal in the midst of an otherwise straightforward scientific paper. Additional data suggests an, an old age for the deposits came shortly after the Sabo paper. Virginia C. McIntyre, while studying the characteristics of the overlying tephra units, discovered two things that suggested an old age. Although neither of the techniques she used provides a direct age in years, the results can be compared with similar material of known age and thus an age for the unknown deposits can be inferred. She found that hypersteen crystals in the tephras were deeply etched. Rather than being pristine, well-formed crystals, they resembled a picket fence. Hypersteen crystals form a 24,000-year-old tephra in similar climatic environment elsewhere in Mexico displayed minimal evidence of etching, suggesting that the age of Balsequillo tephras is greatly in excess of 24,000 years. Her second piece of evidence is from tephra hydration dating based on the amount of water absorbed by the volcanic glass shards in the tephras. When volcanic glass shards form, they typically contain minute gas bubbles. With time, the glass gradually absorbs water. The greater the amount of water in the glass, the older is its age. Eventually, the gas bubble cavities begin to fill with water. This is known as superhydration. Bubble cavities in the two Malsequillo tephra layers that could be dated by the method contain water. Comparison of the percentage of water in the bubble cavities to the percentage in tephras of known age suggested in age about 250,000 years for the Balsequillo tephras. Thus, by the time I got my circons today, Three lines of evidence suggested that these deposits were greater than 200,000 years old. Now listen to this. This guy's telling you that before he even did his type of dating and scientific uh, testing, there was already three people telling him, three geologists different using methods that it was old. Now he was going to do his testing. I determined fish and track ages on circons from two of the Terford units overlying the artifact beds. The Huejetalaco ash yielded a circumficient track age of 370,000 plus or minus 200,000 years. And the Tetela brown mud yielded an age of 600,000 plus or minus 340,000 years. There is a 96% chance that the true age of these tephras lie within the range defined by the age and the plus or minus value. Now, there were four different geological dating techniques that suggested a far greater antiquity to the artifacts than anyone in the archaeological community wanted to admit. You guys hear that? They did four different types of tests, the geologists, and they determined those dates. The archaeologists, I'm trying to tell you guys, they didn't have no carbon dating. Virginia Steen McIntyre presented all of the results on the geology and age of the deposit at a symposium of the New World archaeological geology in 1973 the following quote from a summary of the conference geology 1974 page 77 has been on my wall ever since c Irvin williams who did the original archaeologic work believes that such a great age is virtually impossible and that sources of error must be sought in the dating methods with the exceptions of a few papers by virginia c mcintyre in the geological literature the unique and exciting discovery of an old early man site in North America ceased to exist. In my mind, this is where the scientific method failed. There were geologic indicators that someone had been here 200,000 years ago or more. Unfortunately, the existing paradigm was that no one preceded the Clovis cultures to the Americas and that it was a waste of time and resources to even look for pre-Clovis sites. Through the scientific method of investigating the world around us, many paradigms have come and gone. 
being replaced with newer ones, such as the Earth and other planets circle the Sun. The Earth is spherical. The continents have drifted, and evolution explains the great diversity of species. You guys hear that? <laughs> those are all the hijacks. Well, that's the hijack. He's letting you know those are all the hijacks. Spherical Earth. Okay? The idea of Clovis being the first New World culture needs to be tested, not just accepted. I was pleasantly surprised a few years ago when I learned that Marshall Payne was going to revisit the Balsaquillo deposits. A lot of new and exciting data has come from this renewed interest. Perhaps the most exciting is the data presented by Sam Van Landingham on diatoms, microscopic fossils from within the artifact beds and overlying younger beds. He finds species of diatoms that became extinct about 80,000 years ago. That is another piece of geological evidence that indicates an old age for these deposits. So now we have at least five independent geological age estimates that all indicate an old pre-Clovis age for the Balsaquillo site. The factors that affect the accuracy of each of these techniques are so different that it is highly unlikely that all five techniques could significantly overestimate the age. One of my colleagues always tried to interpret geological processes using principle of Occam's razor. The simplest explanation is usually correct. In this case, we have the choice of accepting the results of five independent geological techniques as correct and concluding that the artifacts are greater than 200,000 years old or alternatively arguing that for very different reasons there is something significantly wrong with each of the geological age estimates. I think that the readers of this book will find that the Clovis first paradigm is listed badly and quite possibly has sunk against the rocks of renewed scientific inquiry. C.W. Neiser, Herndon, Virginia. Now we get to read a little bit of chapter one, something very interesting that I realized that it talks about here. I'm going to, I'm going to explain to you guys. This here two old bones, huh? Two old bones, right? What are these two old bones? Since in 1959, two fossilized bones were discovered on opposite sides of the earth, right? Listen, 1959, they found two bones. So they're going to tell you one was in America and one was in Africa. Pay attention to this. Each promised to change the way we looked at human evolution. One succeeded. The other did not. Okay? That's a big one right there. Which one do you guys think succeeded? Yeah, the monkey bone. In June, Lewis and Mary Leakey discovered Singe, a pre-human skull. All right? Pre-human. That's not human. Pre-human skull deep within Africa's Olduvai Gorge. Singe, short for Singatrophus boise, belonged to the genus Australopithecines. All right? You guys hear this? Which immediately preceded our genus Homo. Okay? <laughs> Australopithecus. A year later, Mary happened across a couple of bones on a side of a road. They were much more human like the real tool users. Much more human, but they weren't still human, guys. They were knighted Homo habilis, Latin for handyman, the toolmaker for others, Old Dubai Gorge, right? They're still not modern humans. They're different type. Again, this is what they're talking about. Australopithecus robustus, which is what they're finding on the other side in Africa. What they're saying humans evolved from. One of the apes, all right? Uh, you can see how he's cheesing right here. He's like, hey, smile for the camera. Planet of the Apes, smile for the camera. Say cheese, cheese. Like, don't worry. I got you, dog. I got you. Don't worry, man. Say cheese. What's up? Be like, hey, man, I'm your ancestor. Man, I'm your ancestor. And he like, what? What are you talking about, Willis? What are you talking about, Willis? Yeah, I'm just saying, man. I'm your ancestor. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you guys see, this is uh, what they're finding in Africa. Okay, this is what they're finding in Africa in 1959. Right. All right, so Australopithecines. <laughs> For 30 lackluster years, Lewis Leakley remained true to his theory that East Africa held the keys that would unlock the evolutionary secrets of the human species. A generation of looking finally paid off. These discoveries established East Africa as the fertile crescent of human beginnings. Age estimates ran anywhere from 300,000 to 500,000 years. Dates from a new technique called potassium argon that dated lava and volcanic ash said it was more like 2 million years ago. All right, so they're talking about the monkey bones, though, guys. They're not talking about modern humans. 
Africa's role in human evolution, previously considered a backwater, became paramount. So they're letting you know that before that, nobody was really going down with that. This is when they made the belief real. This is when they created their whole theories a reality. It turned the archaeological world upside down because of the attention paid to this discovery. Now, because everybody was like, oh, look, they found a monkey bone or ancestors over there, right? Because the attention paid to this discovery, the past 50 years have witnessed countless African excavations paying homage to our pre-modern, not, that's not my pre-modern ancestor, our pre-modern ancestors and their modernizing progeny. Africa's new fame owed it all to the discovery of a single bone. All right? They're talking about one little bone, and now we all from Africa from monkeys. You guys see what they did in 1959? All right, so let's continue. It says here, two bones that shook up the world were found months apart. Months apart in 1959. Top. To tell the first, America's earliest art piece found by Juan Armenta Camacho, April 1959. Remember, they found art in the pelvis of a mastodon bone in 1959 in this deposit that's going being dated back 200,000 years old by geologists and they're talking about in Africa about monkeys monkeys right that can't even draw think about that months apart listen to what they're telling you months apart listen to this bottom cinch aka Australopithecus robustus Australopithecus robustus <laughs> Australopithecus robustus all right you guys understand what's going on all right, they're finding art, human art. They're finding human art over here. Presence of modern human because they're finding spirits and everything, weapons and everything, things that modern humans did, right? They're finding all that. And then they're talking about monkey bones in Africa. Found by Mary Leakey, July 1959. All right, I want you guys to pay attention to what I'm about to say right here. So it's, look, they found the art in April, right? In America. Proven there was humans here that created art. Talking about modern humans. Deposits of 200,000 years old, according to geology. And then in July, months later, right? What comes first? April or July? I'll wait. What comes first? April or July? April, right? This came first. And then what they do? What did they do? They say, well, hey, we got we to gotta do something. They found it. They're, they're finding the truth over there. It's going gonna, it's gonna to prove America's a true old world. We gotta, we gotta find some more monkeys. And look what happened in July. Look what happened in July, guys. I know a lot of people might take this like I'm trying to be disrespectful or not, but I'm just literally, this is, to me, this is such a huge joke. Like, this is so messed up what they did. Again, the guy telling you, they drew all the attention. Of course, nobody paid attention to what was being discovered in America. They drew all the attention and now everybody's from a monkey. And everybody's out of Africa again. All right. This is your ancestor, the, the monkey man. The monkey man, they're saying, is your ancestor. Is that really who your ancestor is? A few months earlier in central Mexico, self taught fossil hunter Juan Armenta Camacho was prowling around the Valsequillo Basin about 120 kilometers southeast of Mexico City, a favorite hunt of his since the early 1930s. The hardened alluvial deposits of this ancient basin were a world-renowned source of Ice Age fossils. Horse, camel, tapirs, saber-toothed cats, and three kinds of extinct elephants, mammoth, mastodons, and the fortus gomophotir reconterium. I showed you guys, those look almost just like elephants today, just much bigger, with big husk. During his rounds on that April day in 1959, Armento found a bone sticking out of the hardened sediments. He pried it free, just another mineralized pelvis fragment from an old elephant, but he kept it anyway. That evening, he began cleaning the specimen, brushing off the gritty matrix still sticking to the piece. Then he saw them, engravings of extinct animals such as a feline figure with spears running through its body. Okay? Okay? A serpent's head. A serpent's head? A tapir, a short-faced bear, and several types of elephants. Taking center stage was the incredibly ancient Gomophotir, a Fortus cousin of the Mastodon, and recently given a cameo role in the Lord of the Rings series. It was gone from the States a million years ago. 
but apparently hung out with the other elephants in central Mexico a lot longer. Nobody knows exactly when it died out. A year later, the engraved bone was on exhibit at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. You see who took it? Oh, it's lost today, right? You see what happened? It was given its own spread in Life magazine. It was even in Life magazine. It was not a hoax, okay? This was real. Smithsonian Institute displayed it. It was on Life magazine. This was not a hoax. This was real. The art had been engraved when the elephant bone was still fresh, still green. The elephant and the other animals pictured had all died out at least 10,000 years ago, marking the end of the Pleistocene Ice Age. The mineralized art piece had to be at least as old as the Ice Age, if not older. Armenta's life of exploring and study had paid off. He always knew there were artifacts among Balsiquillo's prehistoric bones, but the pros always snubbed the evidence, not this time. In Mexico, it was hard to get any more exposure than Juan Armenta Camacho received. His New World discovery was on par with Leakey's discovery in East Africa. Each finding meant an entirely different thing, but each carried a TNT punch that shook the foundations of archaeology. Okay? Again, repeat that. Listen, guys. Each finding meant an entirely different thing. Meaning, you know, you got a lie, an out-of-Africa theory, a whole lie, and then you got the truth, an archaeological actual artifact. Mexican scientists had judged that the Valsequillo beds could go back several hundred thousand years, perhaps to the beginning of the Pleistocene. Almost simultaneously, two archaeological revolutions exploded on opposite sides of the world. Leaky and the Old Dubai Gorge in Africa became household words. All right, so that got more attention. It was more popular because you know how the hijack works. They're trying to promote that. And Armenta and Valsequillo drifted into nothingness, right? They got no attention. They forgot about them on purpose. How come? In 1961, the engraved bone was hallowed by the prestigious volume, the American Heritage Book of Indians. It echoes what many archaeologists and prehistorians were beginning to ponder about the Valsequillo discovery. All right, so real quick, I want to show you guys that book they were just talking about, the American Heritage Book of Indians. On page 28, they're talking about man's early marks, and they're talking about the actual drawing. You see the mastodon bone? It says here, as more of the early marks of man are found, the horizon may be pushed back even further. The incised mastodon bone below, unearthed in Mexico in 1959, hints that man may have been in the New World as much as 30,000 years ago or older, right? All right, so this is what he was talking about, how they put it in this book. Letting you know it must be older. It's got to be. So this book was still going with the clothing stuff, right? So again, the book goes over the information we kind of went over. Everything pointed to archaeology older than the Clovis period. Everything pointed to Valsequillo as a paradigm buster, a site that would destroy the primacy of the prevailing Clovis theory. They only had to wait for the dates. Then thunderstruck, 250,000 years, give or take 50,000 years. Then something stranger happened. The archaeologists walked away. They just went home. For them, the days were so old that to take them seriously would impunct their own scientific credibility. All right. So that's why Cynthia didn't want to admit it was that old because she's like, well, I already dated it, you know, 40, 50,000. I already told you it's older than Clovis, you know, let's not get exaggerated. So she would have to be, you know, kind of saying she was wrong. So, of course, she wasn't going to admit that. So that was this book again, The First American, The Suppressed Story of the People Who Discovered the New World. OK, this is a cover up. So I wanted to show you guys that if you actually look for this, you find a lot of good articles, actually, in scientific studies and reviews. It says here, World Archaeology, Valsequillo Pleistocene Archaeology and Data, an ongoing controversy in Central Mexico. Okay, this is from 2006. There's also this other article I found here, which is very, very interesting because this is another actual scientific dating test they did. A whole different method, right, of something they had found in the same region, Valsequillo region. This is from the Micropaleontology uh, magazine or book. This is volume 50 or journal, right? Number four from 2004, pages 313 and 342. All right, 30 pages. If you want to read it, if you want to look for it, it's on JSTOR. You can read the whole thing. The name is Corroboration of Sangamonian Age of Artifacts from the Valsequillo region, Puebla, Mexico, by means of diatome biostratigraphy by Sam L. Van Landenham. All right. So basically, 
what they're going to tell you here is that they found something else, right? Another artifact in another place in the same region, right? Valset Kiyo region. What did they determine? It says important artifacts. This is the abstract. So this is what you find right here. This is uh, very blurry if you guys want me to read it, but I'd rather read this part right here because it's very clear. It says abstract. Important artifacts have been found in C2, not redeposited. Again, they have been found there, meaning they're not hoaxes. So nobody posited them there. Within lacustrine deposits in the Valsikiyo region, these deposits contain many diatoms, which indicate an age corresponding to the Sangamonian interglacial sensu Lato, 80,000 to 220,000 years before the present. Two of the four samples in this study are associated with the Dorenberg skull or with stratigraphic units. We're talking about skulls, people, humans. 2004, they find it in these deposits that are dating back to 80,000 to 220,000 years old. A whole different method. These four diatomaceous samples yielded 30 extent and 143 extant diatom taxa. The ages of the four samples correspond to other diatomaceous samples, some of which are associated with artifacts from nearby Balsiquillo locality. They're talking about the ones they found in Huellatalclo. It corresponds. So again, the whole article is basically to corroborate that they actually found other artifacts in Balsiquillo region that are also being dated up to 200,000 years old by means of diatom biostratigraphy, a whole different method. All right, this is real science. If you're going with science, right? All the science lovers. <laughs> so we go back to the original website I showed you in the beginning of the video. They have um, some good references here I want to go over. So we got this article, Suppressed Evidence for Ancient Man in Mexico. And again, it goes over all the information, all the evidence and what went on. Another great article. You guys can check it out. Again, this is all on this website, www.vegetalco.blogspot.com. There's another article here, review of the Valsiquillo, Mexico, early man archaeological sites with emphasis on the geological investigations by Harold uh, Maldi. All right, a whole article right here that we're not going to get into because it's basically just proving the same thing over and over. This is his work. Remember, there was five different geologists that did different tests and they all came up with the same conclusions. We also got Vestigios de Labor Humana in Huesos de Animales Extintos de Valsequillo. That's in Spanish. That's the guy who found the bone. He wrote his own article. Then we got Sabo. Remember Sabo? He did his own testing and he wrote an article. It's called Dilemma Posed by Uranium Series Dates on Archaeologically Significant Bones from Valsequillo, Puebla, Mexico. Okay. And then we got the article from the coordinator research we saw earlier. Geologic Evidence for Age of Deposits at Huejetlaco Archaeological Site. You can guys can read all that, the whole study, the research is there, the evidence, the proof is there. And you want to go with monkey bones? All right, and there's even more. This is from metallicman.com. It says here in our, the archaeological dilemma of the 250,000 year old Huejetlaco site remains. And of course, Ancient Origins also covers this. You guys know this website, controversy at Huejetlaco when did humans first inhabit the Americas? What happens when an archaeological site is so extraordinary that it threatens to eclipse everything we knew about history up to that point? Some discoveries are just too hard to fully grasp, and that makes us question their accuracy. Huejetlaco in Mexico is one such archaeological site, forcing us to reconsider the time frame of human habitation in the Americas by a lot. The finds presented at Huejetlaco are still a matter of heated debate among scholars today. They're still debating it even though with the science is there but one thing is certain there are still many unanswered questions which need to be explored we're here on bcvideo.com let's hear new evidence of early man suppress what happens when scientific evidence conflicts with theory in the early 60s archaeological discoveries were made in central mexico which were the handiwork of early man exquisitely carved animal bones and advanced spear points caused much excitement including a life magazine article until the dates came in Five mutually exclusive geological tests revealed they were over 250,000 years old. In spite of the geochronology, archaeologists insisted the dates were too ridiculously old. This world-class archaeological region became off-limits for official research, a professional forbidden zone. There's something rotten in Denmark here. Something nasty is going on. Just a vicious circle. You know, with each 
you know, successive investigation, uh, the picture seemed to get uh, even more complicated and confusing. These people have been ordered not to grant me an interview. Somebody didn't want that dig done. In 1959, Louis Leakey and his wife Mary changed the vision of the world when they discovered the remains of an ancestral human who lived in Africa almost two million years ago. In the same year, perhaps even the same field season, one of the great coincidences in archaeological science occurred on the other side of the globe. In 1959, Juan Armenta Camacho, a gifted amateur, discovered stone artifacts and fossilized animal bones that were eroding from the banks of an old lake bed in central Mexico. The finds from Africa and Mexico share many similarities, but the story of what happened with each discovery is one of the most dramatically different parallels in the history of archaeology. While Leakey's finds were embraced as confirmation of man's origins in Africa, Armenta's discovery ignited a firestorm of controversy about man's first occurrence in the New World and a suppression of evidence that continues to this day. Near the city of Puebla, about 70 miles southeast of Mexico City, a number of ancient volcanoes rise from the central plateau. The region was known to the Aztecs as the Land of Giants. When the Spanish began digging their foundations for their 17th century cathedrals, they had unearthed the bones of large mammals unlike anything they had ever seen. By the 1950s, paleontologists had known for decades that the shores of the Valsequillo Reservoir were a rich source of Pleistocene fossils the bones of large mammals that had lived in the region long ago, but became extinct at the end of the last ice age. Williams immediately knew that a 22,000 year old date paralleled the oldest known spear points found in the old world. This meant that if the spear points found at Weatlaco were any lower in the strat column than Colopin, she would have to face the unthinkable, that she had found the oldest spear points ever discovered in the new world. As controversial as this date was, it was nothing compared with what was yet to come. The release of the 22,000 year date triggered an avalanche of unexpected events. Dr. Jose Luis Lorenzo, head archeologist at Mexico's National Museum, published a bulletin accusing Irwin Williams and Juan Armenta of planting their discoveries. Then, according to eyewitnesses, Lorenzo sent armed federales to the site to intimidate the workers, trying to elicit confessions that they planted the controversial spear points. The people with the guns wanted the workers to say that the site was salted. What that means is that instead of digging the bones and the tools out from the sediments themselves, somebody planted them in the dirt and then dug them up and said, oh, we found them here. All right, and uh, for the dismount, we got uh, this book, very good book. I owned the physical copy of this book a long time ago. I lost it before the internet came out. I used to read a lot of the Michael Cremo books. One of them is The Hidden History of the Human Race, which I also have read uh, in, in some of my videos. And I had the physical copy. This book right here is Forbidden Archaeology by Michael A. Cremo and Richard L. Thompson. Again, Forbidden Archaeology, right? So we go to section 5.4.4 or chapter five or part five, and it talks about Huella Traco, Mexico. In the 1960s, highly sophisticated stone tools, rivaling the best work of Cro-Magnon men in Europe were unearthed by Juan Armenta Camacho and Cynthia Irwin Williams at Huella Traco near Valsequillo, 75 miles southeast of Mexico City. Stone tools of somewhat cruder nature were found at the nearby site of El Horno. At both the Huella Talco and El Horno sites, the stratigraphic location of the implements does not seem to be in doubt. However, these artifacts do have a very controversial feature. A team of geologists, some working for the U.S. Geological Survey, gave them dates of about 250,000 years before the present. 
this team working on their grant from the National Science Foundation, okay? It consisted of Harold Maldi and Virginia Steen McIntyre, both of the U.S. Geological Survey and the late Roald Frixell of Washington State University. These geologists said four different dating methods independently yielded an anonymously great age for the artifacts found near Valsequillo. The dating methods used were uranium series dating, fission track dating, tephrahydration dating, and study of mineral weathering. The carbon-14 and potassium argon methods were not applicable at the Huella Tlalco and El Orno sites, and paleomagnetic measurements did not provide any useful information, right? So let's not forget the diatome uh, dating that we just read about that they did uh, in another uh, site in the same region, Valsequillo region, which also went back to 80 to 250,000 years old. As might be imagined, the date of about 250,000 years old obtained for Huelletalco by the U.S. Geological Survey team provoked a great deal of controversy. If accepted, it would have revolutionized not only the New World anthropology, but the whole picture of human origins. We're talking about America being the true old world, guys, here. Human beings capable of making the sophisticated tools found at Huelletalco are not thought to have come into existence until about 100,000 years ago in Africa. Do you guys see why? They don't want to accept this. Of course, it is possible to dispute the dates reported by the U.S. Geological Survey team, but something more than a legitimate scientific disagreement over dating techniques appeared to have been involved in the treatment of Huelletalco, as we shall see from the testimony of Virginia Steen McIntyre. First, however, we shall examine how the anomalously old dates for the site were obtained. There's here negative reception of the Huelletalco evidence. Virginia Seen McIntyre was sent us some of her correspondence, which documents the difficulties she had in publishing her findings on Huelletalco. We shall now introduce extras from this correspondence. Our purpose in doing so is to clarify how anomalous evidence is treated by the scientific community. Among the social processes that discourage acceptance and reporting of anomalous evidence are ridicule and gossip, including attacks on character and accusations of incompetence. Furthermore, discoveries have almost no impact in the world of science unless they are published in standard journals. The editorial process, especially the practice of anonymous peer review, often present an insurmountable obstacle. Some submissions are made with a wall of silence. Others are shunted around for months, from editor to editor. Sometimes manuscripts are mysteriously lost in the shuffle. And while positive reports of anomalous evidence are subject to protracted review, and or rejection, negative critics are sometimes rushed into print. Occasionally, a maverick report eventually does appear in a journal, but only after it has gone through some extensive modification that the original message has become totally obscured by editorial deletions and in some cases, rewriting of data. All right, you guys see this censorship? Virginia Steen McIntyre experienced many of the above mentioned social pressures and obstacles. In a note to a colleague, July 10, 1976, she stated, I had found out through back fence gossip that Hal Malti, Roald Frixel, and I are considered opportunists and publicity seekers in some circles because of Huelle Tlalco, and I am still smarting from the blow. So she's basically letting these people know, Michael Cremo, how, what she went through. So after many different cases of what she's going through, it says here, the case of Virginia Steen McIntyre opens a rare window into the actual social processes of data suppression in Paleo anthropology. This is why we're doing this video right here because this has been going on for years, guys. Processes that involve a great deal of hurt and conflict. In general, however, this goes on behind the scenes and the public sees only the end result. The carefully edited journals and books that have passed the censors. That's what all we get. All the censor stuff. A final note. We ourselves once tried to secure permission to reproduce photographs of the Huelle Tlalco artifacts in a publication. We were informed that permission would be granted only if we have a date of no more than 30,000 years for the artifacts. Listen to what that, they got blackmailed. They say, well, we'll let you have the pictures if you only say it's 30,000 years old. That's it. But permission would be denied if we intended to cite a lunatic fringe date of 250,000 years. So you guys here, they're not even sharing the uh, findings we grant that the 250,000 year date may be wrong but it is really appropriate to apply the term lunatic fringe to studies such as the one carried out by Steen McIntyre and her colleagues that's a good question all right so that's the end of uh 
the talk here uh, in this book. But again, this book points out a lot of things that are, again, forbidden archaeology. This is one of them. This is a great book of all the incredible things they found, guys, if you like reading about this stuff. There's some amazing things here that will blow your mind. I uh, used to read this a long time ago. This is what I'm saying. This is the kind of previous studies I had before I even started my channel. When we were talking about America, the true old world, I just want you guys to see more and more proof. There's more and more finds, discoveries, you know, readings, books, scientific research, archaeological research that show America is the true old world, older, right, than all their monkey bones in Africa, okay? He's like, what you mean, man? I'm your ancestor. What you mean? I'm your ancestor. And I'm going to ask you straight up, guys, is this your ancestor? So the same people telling you out of Africa theories are telling you that you come from apes. When you believe in out of Africa theories, you believe in evolution and you believe you come from apes, from this guy right here. And he loves it. He's like, yeah, I'm your ancestor, man. I'm your ancestor. Hope you guys enjoyed this presentation. I hope you guys see why I did the video. It's a big cover up. This site is very important. It's been buried and nobody is talking about it, what they found there and the findings that the geologists did with their scientific dating and research. Much love and respect. Pura vida, mi gente. Hawaii.